Hi guys, welcome to Motivational Monday. Today I have a special guest with us, Miss Grata Love. She is a spoken word poet and a visual artist. So I'm so glad to have her here. We're gonna talk about chasing dreams. Do you wanna say hello real quick? Hi everyone, I'm Grata Love. I'm a spoken word poet, visual artist, um, like she just said. But um, I'm so excited to be here and just share more of my story because I believe that stories help transform the lives of other people. Absolutely. And that's really the point of this Chasing Dreams series. I love bringing people on and showing different perspectives, different stories, because I recognize everyone who watches my videos may not resonate with my story specifically, but if I can bring someone on my channel who does represent their story, it helps you connect on a deeper level. And so thank you so much for being a part of Nicole's network. And let's get right into it. You ready? Yes. Perfect. So tell us your story. Okay. So my story started, I guess, as a kid. I've always been writing. Um, it's always been like a good form of communication. When I would be frustrated, I would write letters to my parents. So like, you know, written word has always been um, my first love. And then in eighth grade, I had a teacher who, an English teacher who taught me about rap lyrics. So we learned about Tupac and we're like dissecting the lyrics. Okay, okay, teacher. I, right. And it, I appreciated that because he took a non traditional way of teaching us. Right. And it helped me discover my love of poetry because he would have us write in our journals and share in class. And um, I will never forget this one classmate. I still, I'm still connected with her, but like she was like, Chantel, you got this whack rhyme scheme. Chantel is my real name, but um, she's like, you got this whack rhyme scheme, and I would just be like, I mean, that's all right. And, right, like yeah. So now I'm just like, yeah, Nicole. Now my whack rhyme scheme is on stages, so you're welcome. Like. <laughs> Yeah, All that was, gracious, the best revenge is your paper, okay? <laughs> sure, I heard that. Listen, get it how you live. Um, and I definitely resonated with you when you said about expression through written words. I definitely agree. I've always been that way. And although I have learned to verbally communicate, um, most comfortably is written word for me. So, you know, emails or physical writing or, you know, is how I am more comfortable expressing myself. And I think for me, the reason being is it gives you time to think, gives you time to make sure the words you're saying are the words you mean. <laughs> and, you know, all of that. So it definitely, I agree with you there. I don't know that everyone has that um, preference because you have some people who just love to talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would rather, like, even when I'm upset, like, in a conversation, I always have, I've always been the type to be like, let me cool off, because, mm -hmm. um, you know, people have said things to me that they can't take back, like, mm -hmm. you know, some, almost, some of everything that comes out of your mouth is your truth, so you exactly. kind of have to be like, you know, where, like, I can't take that back, and then yep. one of my friends once told me, um, you know how you overthink things, and you're just, mm -hmm. like, going over and over it in your head. You know, exactly. Like, you know, sometimes when you write it down, what you think is an essay is really a paragraph. Mm. Like, all the dramatics you're going through, sometimes yeah. literally just paragraph. When you sit down and really filter it out, yeah. <laughs> I, I get it, child. Sometimes mine is really an essay, but, you know. Same. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but in actuality, my preference for writing and expressing myself through written word is how I ended up with my first book. My first book started as a journal. It was not intended to be a book. It was just me processing and thinking. And I had committed a year to self-growth and love and development. And I just journaled the process because writing is my form of clarity. And at the end of that year, I was like, oh, this could be a book. <laughs> like this could actually help people. No. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna so. because I need to, I'm on the journey too. Like okay, okay, <laughs> perfect. So when did you first realize your dream of being a spoken word poet and a visual? There was never a big moment. Yeah, I always looked up to Jill Scott. She's like my favorite 
Okay. Jilly from Philly. Yes, girl. And she's going to be on AfroCon this year. And nice. I was like, on okay. Like, so I was like, it was meant to be. Make so, sure you have backup batteries, you know, cameras galore. Noted. 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 So I don't really do music festivals, so I'm like, let's just see. I'm here for Jill. That's um, right. But yeah, she's always a great inspiration to me. My dad um, always played her in the car, and yeah, so seeing her performance style and seeing her express herself, it didn't always have to be a song. Like, some of her mm-hmm. songs do sound like a poem. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. You know, like a monologue. And over time, I would start, like, performing. We had, like, a poetry club in high school, and then I won a poetry. I got like second place in a poetry slam in high school. Then okay. I started performing at random events. Like my mom's friends would have events, and I would just do a poem. And I was like, okay, yeah, that was cool. So then um, after time, I think last February, not this past one, but the one before, mm-hmm. I had my first feature, like my first like name on a flyer, like okay. And I was like, yeah, yeah I was like. It, it's happening. So, this is it, yeah. Yeah, from there, I did a life coach session, and she had me, like, introduce myself to the universe as a spoken word poet. She was like, if this is really what you believe is your only thing to give to the world, which I, I do. I had to go through a lot of self-love and a lot of um, self-awareness where I was just like, I'm not contributing anything. Like, I feel like what I'm giving to the world right now is what anyone else could do. And I was like, what's my unique thing? Right, that right. That moment, crying in the closet, was like, that's all you have to give at the end of the day. Like, yeah. if you die, that's all that is unique to you. Gotcha. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, I definitely, over these interviews, I definitely have learned, and also with myself, like, when you discover your purpose, it's very rarely that you have that one moment. Like, that's such a rare, like, there are some times where it is, but majority of the times, it's like, over time, you start putting pieces to the puzzle, and you're like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. (laughs) Okay, well then, now let's do this. Right. I feel like I was blocking it. Like, you know how, I feel like I took a deep roll, because I went into business first. That was my first degree, Mm -hmm. first college, and I was like okay cool um but then I was like I was like I went to an accounting program like for a week long and I was like yeah. the rest of my life yeah so then I was like I love writing so I studied communications and journalism okay and that was still me it was kind of like a detour but it was still me going back to writing yeah yeah and yeah from there I was like it's creative like all my friends were like you have to share this like you can't just read it to us like you have to tell someone else yeah and I'm commending you for doing that I know we've every entrepreneur I know has had a detour <laughs> like it's <laughs> rare people come out the gate like this is what I'm doing um and I think probably Gen Z might have a good fighting chance just because us as millennials have fought so hard for entrepreneurship it's changing the culture and the expectation and you're the we're loosening the expectations of get a job and more so like find a career which can involve using your passions to make your paycheck right. so i think gen z might be like the first generation that has like that that shot to like just out the gate work in their passion and i am honored <laughs> to be a part of the generation that made that possible yes. I feel like we are just not settling, like, and I love it. Exactly, exactly. My full-time job, um, I work, like, in a, I work for a college, but I work in a high school, and I'm always telling the high school students, like, what do you enjoy? What are you doing Mm -hmm. in your, what are you actually good at? Like, what, not what your parents are asking you to do. What are you, you know, because I was like, we live in a world where people get paid to do what they want on Instagram. Like, Mm -hmm. you can literally do whatever you want and find a way to monetize it. Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) So with that being said and connecting it to you saying that you work with students and um, trying to help them find their purpose in this world, what are some of the things that you hope to give back to the world? From like, you know, books and just experiences and conversations. I believe 
um, compassion and conversation. Mm. Uh, that's like my thing, like just being compassionate to another perspective. And I feel like I use poetry to bring certain stories to life. Um, I just want people to be more, you know, I guess just more open to conversation and open to being vulnerable. So that's yes. something I put, like on stage. I'm always talking about being vulnerable because you can't grow if you're not vulnerable. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Um, a long-term dream I have is to open a community center for children okay. in the arts. Yeah, I'm not sure where or when, but I know the path is going towards that. It's just because I feel like if we let the children heal their wounds early, mm-hmm. we'll have less crime and we'll have less people, less angry people or less hurting, hurt people hurting people. Like, if you get into it early, you don't have to wait till you're like, to be honest, some people are 50 still figuring out what self-love is. And I what? don't Hello. Generations to do it. See? Hello. <laughs> One more time for the people in the back, okay? <laughs> Just saying. Like, because you don't want to be growing older in age and then seeing. Um, I mean, I commend people who are, are doing the work because some people will bypass their whole life and not ever do the work. But like me and my grandmother always have conversations and she always tells me about how she was hushed as a child and she was mm-hmm. told you know, I don't, you know, maybe something happened. Don't but, ask, don't tell. Yeah, and it's just like, we, yeah, she was, she's like, you empower me to speak all the time. And I'm like, that is what needs to happen more often. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And I can appreciate that you're aiming to bring more compassion into the world. And you touched on something that I say all the time, hurt people hurt people. And although it doesn't make the hurt less, it's still the truth. Okay. And there are people in their 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s who still haven't figured out how to heal from their hurt. So they can't help but put that hurt on other people around them. And learning how to change that cycle and break that cycle, because as you said previously, like millennials are not settling. Like you're not going to make me accept the status quo. You're just not, if it doesn't make sense to me, it's a no. Right. (laughs) Like, that's just it. Like, regardless of who you may be in my world, I'm not tolerating certain things. I have boundaries, okay? And just because one individual may lack boundaries doesn't mean that I don't. Right. Yeah, so definitely, and then just more compassion and more friendliness and more just nice. Yeah, like, I'm like, it's so much energy to be angry and to be bitter. And, it takes so much work. And even to take things personally, like the stuff that happens to us, we always, I'm always trying to, I tell other people just so I can remind myself, like, mm. usually it's not a reflection of you, it's a reflection of what that person is going through at that moment. You can't always like think someone is reacting a certain way because of you. And then I'm like, I can't give myself that much credit. I'm not that important. Like, nope. <laughs> like you're a cashier at a store. Like, I'm not that important to you for me to affect you and make you treat me this way. Yeah. It has to be something, something else going on. And I do want to point out, like, a lot of times people minimize how transferable energy is. Hmm. Energy is a very transferable thing, which is why I have the boundaries that I have specifically around energy. If you're negative, if you don't have anything positive to say, like, I'm just going to exit the conversation because that it's like a bad apple syndrome. You can have one bad apple in your bag and it spreads to the whole bag before you even realize. Now, those good apples don't overpower the bad. Do you see what I'm saying? So just like that, like you have to infiltrate your world with positivity and positive people and people who are optimistic and allow that energy to be recyclable. Um, But for me, like I'm very careful about what energy I allow in my space for that very reason, because it is transferable. Exactly. So what motivates you to do everything that you do? So recently, everything sped up because, yeah. yeah, in April, I released my first book. So then, okay. Um, What's the name of the book? Brave New Soul. And where um, can we find it? 
Thank you. See, you knew. <laughs> listen, listen. That's what it, this is about. Yes. Um, it's available on my website, gradalove.com, G-R-A-D-A-L-O-V-E.com. Um, and after releasing my first book, I went on like a book tour. Well, I'm still mm-hmm. on the book tour. Um, it's just been, and then I was on Great Day Washington, like during the month of April, like three times on a Monday. And from there, it's like, now people are like, oh, like noticing, you know, and opportunities mm-hmm. are coming and everything's speeding up. And in a way I get, I do get tired. And I'm like, like I work a full works week. And then I like, I work nine to five, six to 10, like yeah. sometimes throughout the night. Mm-hmm. And my mom is like, how do you do it? And I'm just like, I remember the days crying and being frustrated about not being able to live my and not being in the right area. Like I lived in a place where there was no poetry scene. Um, I didn't have a good support group. I didn't have people around me who understood what I wanted to do. So now I'm just like, this is what you asked for. So, mm-hmm. like, so you might as well. <laughs> right. Yeah. I stopped crying about it. Like, this is what you asked for. So thank you, James. There you go, <laughs> baby. Action. So if you could go back and tell your teenage self one thing, what would it be? Woo. Make it juicy so now. <laughs> well, first of all, my mom used to always give me advice about boys because I was so nervous. I was like, oh my God, they're not going to like me. And that was more of a reflection of like being bullied and being teased. Mm. About, you know, and I was always the sweet sweet I, th- I was like maybe if I just be nice to them they'll stop teasing me like you know like always mm-hmm. trying to be sweet and I think I just learned over time like people are just as human as me and like mm-hmm. I think I would tell her to just focus on yourself because your my friend once told me your longest relationship is with yourself if I would have known that <laughs> like <laughs> I would have just circled in like everything. Like Absolutely. it's about you. Where are you? Um, just kind of like blocking out the the negativity. I would have remembered that I'm not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Friends, boys, whatever. Like, and I would have just probably spent more time just figuring out what I like and don't like, as other rather than trying to figure out what other people like or what people would like from me. And that has transferred over. Like, I feel like now I'm practicing not being a people pleaser, like Mm -hmm. still being a nice person, but still trying to figure out where I'm comfortable in pleasing people. Setting boundaries. Yes. Oh, yes. (laughs) Who child the ghetto? (laughs) (laughs) Just saying. Uh, Yeah, I would probably tell her that stuff and Fake, the whole fake it till you make it thing, I would learn that a little earlier. Because, yeah. And vulnerability was, I was okay with being vulnerable back then, but now I'm learning to be vulnerable in the right spaces. Okay. okay. Vulnerable in the wrong spaces, you become subject to negative energy, like you said, you become subject to unhealthy relationships, yeah. like, so yeah. Manipulation, abuse, all of that. Yep. Yeah. Yes. I agree. And I read a quote and it was like, I may not be everyone's cup of tea, but I'm someone's double shot of Henny. Hello? <laughs> and I was like, yes, Lord. Yeah. Now who's thirsty? <laughs> <laughs> right. I was like, I got one right here. Hello. <laughs> yes. So what projects are you currently working on? Um, I'm working on... Okay, so I just became the associate producer of a web series. Um, yes, we have been working, working. Oh, I'm so What's excited. the web series about? Um, it's called My First Love, Withdrawals and Relapses. My oh. friend. Oh. I know, I know. It's oh. so amazing. It's so amazing. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that second part. I know, right? I was like, like oh, ooh. Ooh. You're like, wait, wait, wait. There's <laughs> No, ma'am. <laughs> So you felt that something inside you felt that. I did, I did. But um, my first love is about being an artist and being a musician 
in navigating the, I guess the road of your creativity, but also the road of your love life and like um, working nine to five and also like trying to be this whole person, you know, dealing with emotional things, dealing with the physical things. So it's just the balance and it's based in, in the DMV area. So it's okay. like multimedia artists. And yeah, it's, I'm just like, when I, when I became associate producer, I was like, I'm married to my first love. This is just like, beautiful. yeah, <laughs> like, this is on the cake. Um, yeah. So I'm really excited. We'll be filming okay. soon. So you all can look out for that. Mm-hmm. We're also looking for like production team members. So, you know, if anyone sees this and is interested, let me know. Um, yeah. So also, I write all around the clock. So mm-hmm. whenever I can, I'm working on new poetry, of course. Um, I am working on a few books. Like, you know how you just write stuff and you're like, you kind of like categorize it? But Chat, I do want to write like novel, six so books in, in pending status, please. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I'm just like, I have to write. Like, I have to get it out. I paint. Um, so whatever way, when the words don't come, I find myself writing or drawing or, um, you know, if it's not a poem, it might be a painting. And I'm like, that's just how it needs to be expressed. And so okay. It's the art. All into the arts right now. Good, good, good. So where do you see your dream in five years? Hmm. I always go by age. Um, hmm. <laughs> 25 next month. Oh my God. Happy early birthday. Thank you. Quarter of a century. Yes. I think that is, I'm like, wow, I'm an adult now. Like, You're a real adult now. <laughs> I'm like, 23, 24 was cool, but 25 just sounds like, whew, here you are. It Hello. feels like it too, by the way. No, oh, thanks. No, thanks. Like 25 in one day, you'd be like, whew. <laughs> I'm so tired. My back hurt. My knee. What? Child. What? 24 and 364 days, you like, all right, cool, you know, whatever. It's just a year, right? <laughs> 25 on day one, you're like, when did I sign up? I'm about to get my gym routine back. You might want to start now. I'm not even going to lie. And, and the reason yeah, I say that, the older you get, and granted, I'm only 27, I'll be 28 in October. What? But the older I, I get, no but the older I get the harder it is to recover so like if I don't stay active it's death okay death I'm like dear god don't ever skip a workout ever because it the recovery is horrible and then you gotta make it a habit because I was going at 5 a.m for a while Mm -hmm. and then so like my accountability partner would be like, nah, nah. and then I'm like, I just need you to go with me for the first three days. Yeah. After the first three days. I got it. But if nobody else is meeting me there, I feel less likely to actually get up. Mm-hmm. Accountability is huge. So I started a challenge, a mile a day for the month of May. Right. Mm-hmm. Whew. So I put it out there. I was like, does anyone want to join me? <laughs> and a, a couple people on Facebook were like, yeah, I'll join you, I'll join you, I'll join you. Some of my sorority sisters, some of my family members, like extended family, they were like, yeah. So now we have a Facebook group where we're just like posting every day and like on the days where I really, really don't want to go. And then I see the notification and I'm like, well, I told them. <laughs> yes, I'll go. <laughs> right. See, that's why you need that accountability is everything for sure for sure so where can oh oh, i'm sorry sorry i was like oh back to the question yeah where do we see your dream in five years (laughs) um in five years at 30 um i totally see myself living abroad for Mm -hmm. at least a year any particular question um i really enjoyed barcelona because it was safe um People generally, you know, spoke a little bit of English. It's a language I could learn. I know I'm capable of learning if I'm, like, concentrated in the culture. Mm-hmm. Um, I really want to travel to London. So if I enjoy London, that might be a place. But, yeah, I feel like once my art gets to a place where I want it to be and I save enough money, 
I would love to just live abroad and create and find some type of residency or something that can just give me a new perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Grow my art in a new way. So mm, I love that. Five years, I'm ready to take the leap. Beautiful. And let's break that down into a, you know, deadlines, action steps. Oh, yeah. So that can be a real thing because that's a good goal. I like it. Perfect. So where can we find you? What is your social media? Repeat your website. Where can we find you? You can find me everywhere. I'm not everywhere now. Because I got on stage the other night and I was like, I'm going to be both tag JK. Like, we are not on there. But uh, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Instagram is the best form of communication. Okay. Um, at Grotta Love, G-R-A-D-A-L-O-V-E. And my website is grottalove.com, G-R-A-T-A-L-O-V-E.com. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us for our Chasing Dreams series. Thank you for sharing your dream with us. Um, do you have any final thoughts? Um, overall, thank you. Thank you for what you do because I thoroughly enjoy um, not just having the opportunity to reflect on everything, but also the opportunity to hear other people's because mm-hmm. even someone can be a doctor and their journey to being a, being a doctor could somehow impact my life. Like, you exactly. never know. Everyone has their thing. And it's like, that's what you feel for that. And that's what I feel for this. And, mm-hmm. and it, it, so thank you for connecting. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, my name is Tierra Nicole. Uh, you can follow me at Nicole Network on Instagram and Twitter. YouTube and Facebook is Nicole's Network. Um, make sure you subscribe to the videos. And if you have any questions for Miss Grata Love, put them in the comments. And if you want to be featured on Nicole's Network um, under Chasing Your Dreams, make sure you send me an email, admin at Network.net. N-I-C-O-L-E-S network. All right, guys. Thanks so much. And we'll see you next time.